Miracle night. Need a miracle? Your miracle is here today. Right now. Welcome to Miracle Night. Your miracle is here. Your host, Prophet Jason Leopard. All right, guys, uh, you can uh, go to our web. We got a couple of websites. I want to get over the announcements before we begin. Uh, guys, we are still on TikTok, but we have changed the name to Kingdom Wealth now because we have migrated our business into the ministry. Well, you know, hey, I'm sorry, but it's just it, it, in, in this business, we will be helping people prosper and, and, and starting their own business. Who knows? You're not going to make money. You're not going to make money working for another man. You're not going to prosper anyways. You're going to stay at a level, guys, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go together, and we're going to help you get in position to prosper. And I, I believe God wants all his children to prosper. I do. I believe God wants everybody to prosper, to be honest with you. Um, if you're doing the right things with your money, amen. Um, but but it'll really help you not just only in that. It'll help you in your finances, how to deal with finances. So, uh, But anyways, um, it'll really help you all around. So anyways, we're, we are uh, doing that on TikToks. So by the way, on Fridays, not I, I, but if you want to get on our email list, just shoot us a message. My administrator's on here tonight. She'll see y'all's message. Uh, if you want to follow us, We'll put you on our email list on Kingdom Wealth Now or God Save Ministries. We got two email lists, and we will have sign up forms uh, so you guys can, or you can throw your email up here. We'll put you on the list. Tell us what list you want to be on: the God Saving list or the Kingdom Kingdom Wealth Now. Um, but anyways, um, we are uh, we're going to be we're we're going to be on. Uh, we're also, uh, you can visit us at www.godsavingministries.com and don't forget the radio station, guys. We're live on the radio right now at uh, Kingdom, Kingdom, uh, kingdomradio.com. Uh, you can also go back to these messages for the kingdompodcast.com. So we have all kind of websites, okay? Um, we also uh, have a website for the uh, Kingdom Wealth Now. It's called kingdomwealthnow.co, C-O, dot co. You can go to that, too. It links in the bio up at the top on TikTok. If you're not on TikTok, you can go to it, whatever you listen on the radio of us. It don't matter where you, wherever you're listening. We, we do have a um, um, business that we get you set up to become your own business and start your own business. So, um, And prosper, guys, and, and get in position to prosper. Uh, so, um, anyways, let's get started. I'm done with the announcements. Uh, let's get started, guys. We're going to be talking about being teachable tonight, being teachable. And, and, and I see this in the church a lot. We, we don't have a lot of, we have a lot of, oh, the revival's over here, revival's over there, revival's over here, and, and the move of God's over here. People holler, screaming, whatever. You know, the move of God is moving, you know. Hello from NC, hello, hello, North Carolina, you're right next to me. You're right next to me. But anyways, we're, we're uh, if you like to, to be taught tonight, that's what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be uh, in the Word of God, but we're also going to be in in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 tonight, okay? We're, we're, we're here to teach you guys. And if you're not learning, you're not growing, you know what I'm saying? You, you, church is not a place our ministry is not a place. Matter of fact, that it's not a place where we uh, come and ye yelling and not learning anything. I want you guys to learn and apply it to your life. You see what I'm saying? So you apply it to your life. You you don't just you know come in here and um, listen to. But this is Miracle Night, by the way, and uh, we've been doing Miracle Night for quite some time now. So. Tonight, we're going to be in the Word of God, uh, uh, James, King James, in the King James Version. 
We're, we're going to be allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us tonight. Amen. I, I just believe in teaching. I, I believe in teaching, guys. I really do. I believe in teaching. And, and guys, I, I'm out here to help people. I'm out here to help people get to other levels in their life financially, spiritually. You know, I'm here for you spiritually. I'm here for you financially. I want to get you guys on the road and connecting to your own business. So we're, all, we're, we're doing all this to help you guys. And, and I told a guy today, I said, listen, guy, let me tell you something. More, I, I know what it's like to suffer need. I know what it's like to suffer and, and, and have need. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm a tither, and we will teach you about that too. Tithing is very important. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Tithing comes first. Um, you got to give God what's God, give Caesar's what's Caesar's. But I think it's just, it's more than that too because God is leading me where, you know, we've we got to get this mindset as a millionaire. You know, a lot of your uh, entrepreneurs and millionaires, they got a different mindset than, than people that don't have money. So, but anyways, we, we're not going to talk about that tonight, guys, but I'm, I'm just giving you a little bit what we're changing here because I know a lot of you think, whoa, wait a minute, he's kingdom wealth now? Well, yeah, I'm kingdom wealth now because God spoke to me and he said, son, I'm going to prosper you, but I want you to help others to prosper. And, and, and as you do for others, God's going to do for you. Amen? So it's not when God prospers you, it's never just for you. It's for everybody, it, like Joseph. Joseph prospered, but it was for his whole family. See what I'm saying? So when God blesses you in this season, and I know we're going through a, I know, guys, I, I feel it, really. I, I do. I feel the, I, I feel a thing that we're going through of uh, lack, and it just seems like everything is going under. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but it's not. It's uh, in the kingdom of God, we're going up, amen, and we're going over, and, and God's blessing, amen. So uh, let's uh, turn to 1 uh, Timothy chapter 3. There, we're going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. This is where God's leading me tonight. And I, I, I can't tell you why, but that's where he led me tonight. And I'm, I'm going to read this. And, and, and guys, sometimes we put people in position for reasons. We put people in positions for reasons. Amen? So let's, let's see what Timothy has to say for the structure of the church. And that's what this is talking about. I don't know why God wanted me to go here tonight, but he wanted me to go here for some reason. Amen? So, okay, in verse 3, Timothy, if you have your Bibles with you guys, I will encourage you to take your Bible and follow along with me, okay? A lot of people, they just trust me what I say. I could be telling you a lie, but I want you to get in the Word and understand understand what God is trying to tell you tonight. Amen? I want you to learn. I don't want I don't want you to just come in here and not have the understanding. And and I'm going to read this. It says, "This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. And a bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife." And that don't now 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 let's get something clear here. Let's knock some doctrine out of the way, okay? I've been in churches where they think if you've been married before, you 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 don't you you don't qualify for a bishop. They can't. But let me tell you something. That's a false doctrine. That's a false doctrine. I don't care where you look at it. It's false because Moses was married twice. He was married one time to his wife and then an Ethiopian woman in, in Numbers chapter twelve. So he was married twice, and God still used him. So God's not talking about if you've been married before or not. He's just asking what you're doing in the present time. What are you doing right now? Do you have two or three wives? Then you don't qualify for the bishop. Amen? You don't qualify because you got two or three wives. He's talking about your present, okay? He's not talking about what happened in your past. You can't right now. What are you doing right now? And this is what he's meaning right here. And most people misquote that. I'm telling you, they, they get this doctrine about it. Oh, that man's been married before. Let me tell you something. What if my wife dies? What if she leaves? What if she dies? Do, does that disqualify me from being a pastor or a bishop? No, no. It does not. 
because what is the difference if she dies or if she commits adultery on me and leaves me? Whatever, whatever the case may be. There's no difference, guys. So see, that's a false doctrine right there. People read stuff and they don't meditate on it because they have no teaching on it. So they automatically think the man is not capable of pastoring a church because he's been married before. That's not true because, like I told you earlier, Moses was married twice, and God used him mightily. God, Listen, God's concerned about your present, not your past. If that's the case, nobody's qualified to be a pastor because <laughs> we all have a past, right? So that's what they're saying and, and, and a lot of people misquote that, and, and they make a doctrine out of it, and that's why they li live under that doctrine. I've been in churches like that. They, they won't let nobody preach if you've been married before. Listen, if God's going to judge me of my past, then, then he's going to judge you of what you've done in your past. So you're disqualified too. Well, yeah, I ain't never been married before, though. Been married to one wife all my life. Well, what is the difference if she dies and, and you get remarried? Come on. What is the difference? There's no difference. So see, you don't know the case or the circumstances of the person that got the divorce. So here's the problem with the church. They get off on these stupid doctrines, and I don't even know why. I mean, it's just something to harp on. So, you know, I, I don't get into all that mess because to me, I'm going to tell you something. God called me to preach. You didn't. And yes, I have been divorced. Hello. Hello. I have been remarried. Yes, I have. But I don't let that get in my way of my call. You know what I'm saying? Because people didn't call me. God did. So let's, let's carry on. Let's carry on. And I just wanted to teach you guys the truth about that. Okay, here, here we go. It is a true saying, if, if a man desire an office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Vigilantly sober and of good behavior. Given to hospitality, apt to teach. So the bishop must be able to teach. Just like I'm doing to you guys right now, I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. And, and, and you know, and I see these ministers all the time. They go on there hollering and flipping, flopping in the floor and like this and like that. But let me tell you something, what's most important in a ministry is teaching. And a lot of and, and this and, and I'm not just going to stop there, guys. I'm talking about teaching you business, or I'm talking about teaching you a lot of stuff in life. You know, nobody wants to learn nothing anymore. They don't want to get in the books no more. They don't want to. They don't want to apply nothing in their life. All they want is entertainment. Oh, if you can entertain me, I'll come. You know, I don't care about entertainment. I don't care if somebody. Uh, gets up there in the rug and runs across the floor and talks in tongues or whatever, whatever the case might be. I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is what have you learned when you walked in this ministry? What have you learned? What have you learned? Nobody wants to learn and nobody wants to listen anymore. All they want to be is entertained. Show the show lights. Let's get the emotionalism going on, and that's all they care about. That's all they care about. So here, here we go, guys. It says, the husband of one wife, visit sober and good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine nor stricker, not given to wine nor stricker, not greedy or filthy lucre. And you know what that greedy and filthy lucre means? means they will do anything for money. And what I mean by that, that filthy lucre is somebody that, that will hurt people over money. Come on. I'm not saying money's evil, guys. Money's not evil. The Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money was evil. It said the love of it. So see, this guy cannot be qualified to be a pastor or a bishop because he, he loves money. But that don't mean that he can't prosper. That don't mean that he can't buy him a big home. That don't mean that God can't bless the socks off of him. That's not what that means. Just because a man lives in a house, lives in a mansion, don't mean he has the love of money. 
Here's how you determine if somebody has the love of money. When, when they do stuff to hurt people with money, come on, they're filthy lucre. They do anything and cheat and scandal to get it. That's a person that loves money. Now, a person that's just blessed and he's, he's a giver and God's just blessed him with homes, cars, and everything else does not mean that he's filthy lucre. Filthy lucre is somebody that does anything to get money, to cheat, lie, and do anything to get money. That's somebody that loves money too, not somebody that pays his tithes and gives and blesses people and buys cars and helps people and, and, and helps people with their groceries. That's not, see, God wants you to be in that position. I said he wants you to be in that position to bless somebody. How can you help somebody when you ain't got it to help them with? Come on. See, he wants you like Joseph, the king of dreams. He wants you in position of Pharaoh because when he gets you in the position of Pharaoh, when, when the blessings, you can be a blessing. That's not meaning they're filthy lucre. Okay, let's get that straight. Because a lot of people got these things in their mind of thinking all these pastors and preachers are preaching for money and all they want is money. No, I'll be honest with y'all. Every part of my ministry, my wife's sitting right in there. I'm sitting right in here in our office in Blue Ridge, Georgia. My wife can tell you and testify to you, every bit that comes in this ministry goes for ministry stuff. Cameras we need, this stuff we need, uh, uh, make music. We're, we're recording anything to get the gospel out. I'm putting money to it. Come on. But I work a job too. So I'm saying. So, but I, I put money in the ministry. This is God's stuff right here. This ain't mine. It's something that God has told me to do. Well, now, if you don't like what God told me to do, well, why you got to have all that, Jason? Why you got to have that? real 400-something dollar mic or why you got to have this. Don't ask why. Because, see, the, the, the problem with the church is they want, they want to tithe, but they want to, 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 to tell the pastor what to do with everything. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. God tells me to do these things. And if you don't believe it, quit sowing. You know what I'm saying? I tell people that all the time. You're not going to tithe in my ministry and tell me what to do. Because you know what? God leads me, not you. And, and you, you know what? I told people, listen, you better invest because God has blessed me and my wife's socks off. And she knows it and I know it. So here's the thing. What does it matter if a preacher prospers? I mean, this is what kills me with people. They're all up on a peach of prospering, but somebody else can prosper. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a doctor or a lawyer from Atlanta or something or a brain surgeon, they can prosper. Well, they work for their money. Do you don't think a pastor works for his money? He deals with a lot of spirits on people, and he tries to help people get in position so God can bless them. You don't think that's value enough? And, and the problem is with people, they don't value what God values. And that's the whole thing. God values a ministry. He does. And what, what is it, any of your business that, you know, the guy's prospering? You ought to be proud of somebody for a change. And maybe if you are proud of him, maybe your blessing's next. But yet we scandal and we judge and we... Oh, that preacher don't need all this. Well, you don't need Cheerios in the morning either. And you don't need a TV to watch either. And you know what? Let me clarify something else. You don't need that couch you're sitting on either because you can sit outside in the rain. But you know what? God blesses you anyways. And that's our problem in the body of Christ. We want to start picking and choosing everywhere. We want to say, well, he don't deserve this. Who are you? Are you God or something? Listen, if God wants to bless me with new glasses, that's me and God's business. You don't worry about it. I tell people used to give in this ministry, I said, listen, if you're going to give in this ministry, give to God, amen? And, and don't pick and choose, well, I'm not paying my tithes no more because I don't like where he's putting the money. You know what? That's none of your business. If God's blessing you, what are you worried about? Come on. 
God's blessing you. And everybody that has gave to this ministry, I promise you, God has blessed you. He has. And that's what the whole problem is, you know. Uh, but we won't harp into that tonight, guys. You know, I know a lot of you, when it comes to money, you're like, oh, he's talking about money again. Oh, I got to leave. So, you know, I'm, I know money's offensive. Money's not offensive to me because you know why money is a tool. I don't love money. If I love money, I wouldn't be giving it away. If I love money, I wouldn't put my money towards God. Amen. I wouldn't give my tithes. Hello. If I love money, I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't love money. I'm not filthy lucre. So that's what that means. Not greedy. Greed. Greed can get you somewhere you don't want to get, guys. I'm telling you. Greed is bad. Greed is something you, you, you don't want to be fair to people anymore. You want to hoard all that money to yourself. That's greed. And I know some people like that I work for right now. They're greedy. They don't want to come off no money. They don't want to treat people fairly. They want to sit on all the money they're on, and they don't want to treat, they don't want to be good to nobody. That's filthy lucre, and that's being greedy. Doing people wrong. Remember that. Doing people wrong with money. Cheating people. Don't want to pay them for what they deserve. Come on. I know employers right now that do not give their employees what they deserve. Come on. Who knows that? When COVID hit, COVID released a fund. Watch this. COVA released a fund for employers to pay their employees. Some of them kept the money. See, see, see what I'm saying? Kept the money because they were greedy. Come on, that, see, that's wrong. That's greedy. That's filthy lucre. That's when you do wrong people with money. Come on. How many times have we done people wrong with money? Well, I'm going to get my money hicked in. See, see, you're going to be judged for that. Yeah, you're going to be judged. God's going to judge you one day when you go to heaven. You know why? He's going to judge you for that very thing. Why did you take that other person's money? I, I made you a boss. I, I gave you a business with employees, and you mistreated them. They'll be judged too, believe me. I know plenty of people right now, really bosses and owners of businesses, that's doing their employees wrong right now. Oh, yeah, they are. They figure, you know what, the economy's going down. I'm not paying them. They'll still work for me, but I'm not paying them what they deserve. They show up for me every day, but you know why I'm not paying them. But God is fixing to set you up. Listen to me, people. God is fixing to set you up with employers that's going to treat you right. Come on. And give you what you deserve. Give you what you deserve. Hear me what I'm, what I'm saying here, guys. Give you what you deserve. I hope, I hope you guys are listening out there because this stuff is good tonight. I'm telling you. Okay. But be patient, not a brawler, not covetous. That means wanting your neighbor's money or wanting what they got. Come on, we don't supposed to be doing that. One that rules, verse 4, one that rules well his own house having his children in subject with all gravity. See, kids can't run your home, folks. I say kids cannot run your home. You know who runs your home? God. You know who's the head of your house? The man. You know, you know who's it? The wife. Come on. I, I'm getting to something here. I'm getting structure in you. You know who is the head of the house? God. Jesus, God, he's the head of the man. You know who's the head of the woman? The man. I'm talking about your house now. I ain't talking about the church house or your business. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your house. God first, spouse second, kids last. Oh, you're telling me to put my kids, I live in a, a blended home. Do you understand that that's, my, that's their stepfather? He's, let me tell you something. It does not matter. 
if you don't get it in order, it won't never be in order. Your marriage will never go anywhere. I'm telling you what I know. Listen, you got to love each other. You got to love God and let him lead the man, woman. And if you don't come into alignment, you're out of alignment. This is the word of God all day long. I believe it. And I'm not saying the man needs to put his thumb on the woman. Let, let me get something straight, women. Men is not here to dominate you, okay? They're here to protect you. Let, let's get that straight. It's not a dominating thing. It's a protection thing, okay? It, it's not here to him to tell you, get down and give me 50. I'm the head of you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. God put the man over the woman for protection. And you got to listen to him because he's, he's got an instinct to protect you. Women, don't you want a man to protect you? Come on now. Don't you want a man to protect you? That's what he's doing when he sees something coming in the house or maybe friends or, and trust me, I've walked through this for many years. And you get a woman that don't want to listen, it's going to end. Satan's going to come right in your home. If you don't line up in this perspective and let the man be the, let God lead the man. Come on. God's got to be leading the man, ladies. God does. And when God is leading the man, it's only your obligation to submit. Why submit unto their husband as unto the Lord? Come on now. Come on. Okay. One that rules his house well, having his children in subject with all gravity. Why did he say the children? Because a lot of times in this, in this life, in this generation, kids run the home. I, I cancel so many people during the day. You would not believe how many people are getting divorced today because of kids. Yeah. Blended homes, stepdaughters, step, it does not matter. If you're going to put a home together, you better put it in order. Because if it's out of order, Satan is going to come in and destroy that home every single time. If you don't put, listen, man, you need to get right with God. You need to start allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you to lead that home. Quit playing around with God because if you're not tight with God, you can't lead that home. And let me tell you something, ladies. When he gets right with God, when he gets in line with God, it's your obligation and it's your duty to line up with him. So here, here we go. All right. For a man... Knoweth not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of God's church? Now, I just told you the structure of a home. God, man, woman, then kids. Okay? Okay, then we're going to go to the structure to the church. Members of the church, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the structure of the church. God, this is the church, guys. God, Jesus, pastor, and then members. Come on. But here's what I see in the structure of the church nowadays. Members and pastor underneath. It never works. It never works. God put that pastor in charge for you to listen to him and submit to him and if you don't submit to your pastor, you're not going to have one. Well, people don't want to hear this. They leave like hotcakes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't care. It's just, it is what it is, guys. It's the structure of the ministry. It is the structure of the ministry, the church. And let me tell you, a church in a whole. Now, we're talking about a church building, the structure. Now, we're going to talk about the structure in a whole, the whole body of Christ, here's how it's supposed to submit. He gave some pastors, some preachers, some teachers, but he first he gave prophets and apostles. Now, pastors, I'm talking to you tonight. Pastors, you're supposed to be in subject to the apostles and prophets. Come on. It's called the fivefold ministry. 
Paul was an apostle. He was subject to the churches. The churches were subject to Paul. But you don't see this structure no more either because the pastors don't want to be subject to anybody. This is my flock, and you ain't getting none of it. Now, you see where we're out of order? You see why everything's happening to the body of Christ now? Because we're, we've gotten out of order. We've gotten out of order at our homes. We've gotten out of order out of the church. We don't have no order in the church anymore. Nobody's subject to anybody anymore. Oh, this is my ministry. It's got my, listen, when it becomes your ministry and not God's, you're through. God done fired you a long time ago. Hello, God ain't going to come in you, and you're not going to have revival because you're not getting into alignment. I'm telling you, this is good teaching tonight. The Holy Spirit's here. He's teaching us. When you get into alignment with God, when you get into his alignment, what he ordered for the church, to how to structure, hey, God's going to move. But I don't see any order in the church anymore because they're not subject to the apostles and prophets anymore. I see pastors all the time getting a crowd in a church. Oh, they got a crowd, but they're not subject to the prophet and apostles. I don't care how much crowds you got in your church. Who in the world's growing in your church? That's what I want to know. I don't care if you got a crowd. Jesus wasn't concentrating on the crowd because he left the 99 and went after the ones. He's not concentrating on a cloud. God, Jesus is concentrating on a cloud. And Jesus taught more in his ministry than hooping and hollering and shabba ba Buddha all over the floor. Talking about you had church. You didn't have church as long as you, did, you didn't get taught. Jesus taught more than he, he preached, guys. He wanted people to learn the kingdom. That's what he wanted. I'm, I structure my ministry after Jesus. See, Jesus did this very thing. He wanted people to learn. He said, learn of me for I'm meek and lowly. See, we don't want to be taught anymore. We want entertainment. Oh, he's got the Holy Ghost. Huh? He read my mail, glory to God. <laughs> he read my mail. <laughs> I don't care who reads your mail. If you're not learning anything, you're no good. You don't have a ministry on TikTok. Well, that's your opinion, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't care about people's opinions, brother. I don't really care. God's got me on TikTok and nobody's moving me. Only, only God can. So really, we don't care. We don't care about people's opinion. I care about what God says about me, not you. Here we go. Uh, let's go to not uh, verse 6. Not a notiful let being lifted up with pride, he falleth under the combination. Not notice, let being up, being lifted up with pride, he falleth under the condemnation of the devil. And let's look up that word right there, notable. So what, what is it talking about here? Not a coming up, lest it being lifted up with pride, he follows the condemnation of the devil. So you can't have pride being a pastor. You can't have you can't be prideful. You gotta stay humble and pray and you know you you, you gotta walk humble here. Moreover, he must have a good Report of them which are without, lest he fall in a reapproach in a snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongued, not given to much wine, not given to much wine. Otherwise, they can't go around drinking and being drunk. You know what I'm saying? They can't do that. That's your opinion, brother, not mine. Uh, not greedy or filthy lucre. So the deacons, see, deacons are not runners. They're not the head of the church. They're not. They're, they help the pastor, yes. 
they're assistant to the pastor, but they can't run the church. The one person God chose over that church to run that church and make major decisions in the body in that church building is that pastor. And that pastor has to be subject to prophet and apostle. Okay? So, but you don't see none of that neither at all. Actually, a matter of fact, when they see apostles and prophets, they run. <laughs> you know why? Because they're not in alignment with God. That's why. And see, that's what I am. I'm a prophet. But see, the thing is, they don't want to submit. They don't want to submit to my office. They don't. And that's why you you see me. I run my own ministry, anyways. I don't really care. God's got me doing what He's got me doing. And, and the thing is, people can't understand why. Well, why aren't you preaching in a lot of these churches? Because pastors don't want us to submit to my office. They don't. They don't. They don't want to be submissive to an office. Yes, I'm called in the office of a prophet. Yes, I am. God called me there. I, I can't help it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't ask for it. I didn't. And, and the thing is, it's okay. It's all right. Here we go. Holding the ministry, the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proven. Proof. Holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience, and let them also first be proved. Let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. So you just don't invite a deacon in your church and ordain him in your church and put him over something without him proving himself first. Okay? You got to prove yourself. You, you got to prove yourself to that pastor. Okay, you, you got to be there with him no matter what. All right, guys, here we go, here we go, here we go. And let those also first be proved, then, then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave and not slanders, sober, faithful in all things. So you got to watch their wives too. If you're going to put a deacon over a church, you got to watch their wife too. Believe me, I know that. I've done experience that. Because I'm going to tell you something. The, the wife is the biggest backbone. You know what I'm saying? She's a backbone to that man. I'm telling you, my, I got a good wife. I got a good wife. She has been real supportive to me. She don't really say nothing. She just trusts his God that leads me, and I appreciate that. We've been together 10 years. Well, almost 10 years in March. She's been very really submissive to what God is doing. She don't argue with me. She just goes, and you know what happens when she does this? God just blesses her everywhere she goes. Why is she worrying about coming against God? You know what I'm saying? So God blesses her and she knows it. I, I don't need a woman in my life that's going to come against everything God's telling me. You know what I'm saying? I've had that. And that's why they're my ex, okay? That's why they're my ex. God sent her to me, and she's been a real blessing. So here we go, guys. Let's, let's carry on here. We, we're getting taught the Word of God. Ain't this good? This is good. It, this is good because now we're learning. We're learning. We need to learn. A lot of you destroyed from lack of knowledge. You don't have knowledge. You don't have structure. You don't have nothing. You, you don't, you're not being taught the Word of God. You've been preached the Word of God, but not taught. Okay, here we go, guys. Which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without craveness, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the faith, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the whole world, and received up unto glory.
Okay, guys. I want to I want to wrap it up with this. I want to be honest with you guys. I I I I've seen the structure of the church, the home. In, in the structure of the church, there's now male or female in the church, but the church is different than the home. Come on, God put an order in the home. He structured the man to be over a woman, not for domination, but protection. Remember that, ladies. He's not there to dominate you, but he's there to protect you. Okay? Listen to him as God talks to him and leads him and guides him. Because when you come against him, it's hard for him to lead and listen to what God has to say. If you're not encouraging your man to listen to God, how can, the stru- how can your home be structured? See what I'm saying? And, and, and we, we go back in Genesis chapter 3. When God comes back in the garden after they sin, who did he come to first? He come to Adam. Now, let's, re, let's fast forward to that situation where God set it in order. God set this order. He said, the man shall be over the woman, and the woman shall desire the man. So let's fast forward from this situation right here, guys. And here's where God, when Jesus came, and he said there's no male or female in the body of Christ. Listen, all of us has to be instruction. But ladies, when you get home, even though you're a prophetess or maybe God's called you to pastor, and I believe in women pastor, I do. But when you get back home and you're married to your man, you're subject to him right then. Because what you're doing is you're telling God the order you set, God, ain't true no more. Jesus come and reset the order. No, he didn't, not the home, but he did the church. Come on, guys. Christ is the head of the church. Come on. I said Christ is the head of the church. We're of the church, so he's the head of us. See this structure I'm trying to teach you here? I'm trying to teach you that Christ is the head of the church. There's no male or female in the body of Christ. But when you get home, the structure is different. Why? Because God said that in order for the family unit for the man to lead. To be the head of the home. So when it gets out of order... Devil can come right in, guys. He can. He always does. Because God designed the man from the foundation of the world to lead. Even if they don't follow Christ, they still got something in them that they must be the head of. God designed that man that way. But when he comes to Christ, watch this. When he comes to Christ, Christ leads him. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. That's what Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. So when the man lines up with Jesus Christ, folks, then the woman starts following. But let me tell you women something. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to close right here, but I'm going to give you this. When the woman follows, she thinks she's nobody because she's a follower, right? But let let me tell you something. Jesus said, the the disciples was arguing in Matthew, and this is what they said. They said, Lord, tell us who's the greatest in the kingdom. He said, those who become the least. So is it better to lead the home, or is it better to follow? And let me tell you, say, let me tell you, ladies, something. You're going to get excited about this. But ladies, let me tell you something. In the kingdom of God, y'all are over us. Let me tell you why. Because God chose a woman to bring his son for salvation. Why didn't he choose a man? Because the woman was the follower. And see, in the kingdom, see, Jesus said one becomes the least is the greatest. So in the kingdom, you guys are greater than us. Ain't that something? God showed me that a long time ago. And and I'm going to tell you something. Women, I'm going to tell you something. Just because the order was the man to lead, But in the kingdom, it was you guys that were the greatest. See, God God is so good because he can take what's fallen 
and make it look like a star. Ain't God good? I mean, he takes the weak things of the world and makes it the strongest. So, so women are considered, according to Ephesians, you're the weaker vessel. But see, God, God used the weaker vessel to bring something strong out of you. He brought his son through y'all. Come on. So ladies, you got something to shout about tonight because God used you to bring something great to the earth. He didn't use a man, he used the woman. So see, in the kingdom of God, y'all are over us. But in this world, we're over y'all because that's the way God designed it. But when Jesus comes, God said, I'm going to take the weaker vessel and I'm going to bring something strong out of her. Even though she failed, even though she's the first one that failed, I'm going to bring something strong out of her. I don't care if you've been weak all your life. God's fixing to bring something strong out of you. That's what he does. He takes the weak things of this world and confounds it to the wise. Ain't, ain't God good? Uh, anyways, guys, that's all I have for tonight, but I will go over this one more time. Kingdom wealth. Now, that's our business. We, we mentor people to... Um, start their own business, make money online. That's what we do. And I, I want to uh, show you guys that. And if you want to be on our mailing list to get more information about that, PM down at the bottom, my administrator will get you. And uh, we'll get your email. I need your email if you want to sign up for it just to find out if it's for you. It only costs $7, guys. That's it, 7 bucks. That's it. To, to learn a skill that you can do a business online to generate uh, income for your house. Good money, too. A seven-figure income. And I, I'm going to tell you something. It works, guys. I'm telling you. I'm on a team with these guys, and I'm telling you, they're rocking the house. And I, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, 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 I this, this, this course that you go through for $7, just blowing your mind away. Blowing your mind away. So, if you want to sign up for the email, uh, just shoot us your email or PM us on here or whatever. Uh, if you say you want on the list, say I want on the list. I want on the list. And and like I say, we'll, we'll put you on the list and send you some emails about it. Or you can go to the bio right up at the top here, guys. The bio on uh, Kingdom uh, Wealth Now uh, on TikTok on the bio and click the link up at the top. That's all you got to click in the bio. Swipe to the left, click the link up at the top, and uh, then you can go on there. Or you can give us our, your email. We'll shoot you an email. However you would like to do that. Uh, if you're looking for a job, you're looking for a career, you're looking to start a business so you can generate income at home, some of these, some of these people on our team, they're, they're uh, ladies that started, you know, they started... Um, they needed a job at home watching their kids, and they, this is perfect for people like that. They want to start a business and make general income to help your husbands or whatever. Bobby Sausage from Tennessee. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about there. But anyways, guys, if you do want to start your own online business, uh, ladies, if you're looking for income to help your husband at home, uh, this is perfect for you. I mean, it, it'll give you time. Uh, you can learn some skills to uh, create your business. So anyways, guys, um, like I say, if you want to get signed up, shoot us your email or click the link up at the bio up at the top, and you can sign up for it. Uh, but anyways... All right, guys, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you for coming on. Uh, it's been real. It's been really real. So, and you guys on the live on the radio, you can go to www.kingdomwealthnow.co, co.co. Uh, you can go on there too and sign up. Um, if you're interested in starting a business and generate income, good income too, from your home. So, it has surely help in these days, guys, surely help in these days. So I just want to mention that because we are doing that now. So 
Um, that's our business. We, we help people get generator income. Uh, everybody needs extra income. I don't know about you. I need extra income. <laughs> we all do. We all do. So, anyways, guys, if you want to sign up, shoot us your email. We'll shoot your email. We'll write it down right quick here. Uh, and up at the top, you can click the bio up there. Or, you know, if you don't want to do that, just shoot, shoot us your email. And we will PM us your email and say, hey, Jason, I want to sign up for it. You know, I, 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 I just want more information. Seven bucks to get started. That's it. Seven bucks. We, we spend that on a pair of shoes, you know, or, well, I think shoes are more than that. <laughs> shoes are more than that. So seven bucks, that's it, guys, seven bucks. And it'll get you started and give you a skill to help you create a generator income to help your husband. and I mean, it's, it's changing people's lives. All right, guys, uh, that's all I have tonight. And if you want to give, you can also go to... Uh, GodSavingMinistries.com forward slash partnership. You got the cash out, uh, cash money sign, God Saving Ministries. And if you got Venmo, we're also on Venmo at God Saving Ministries as well. Uh, you can give there as well tonight. If God's laid it on your heart to give to help us in the ministry, you know, do, do what God tells you to do because I want you to be blessed more than ever. And this is the year that you're coming out, guys. This is the year you're coming out. So get ready. Get ready. You're coming out of debt. You're coming out of not just debt, but God, you're going to make more money this year than you've ever made in your life. And I believe that. I believe God spoke to me that. I, I, I believe God has taken us places we've never been in our life. You're going to go in Jamaica, Hawaii, wherever you want to go. I believe that. I believe God's doing it. I believe God's doing it. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, you can tune in on our radio station, too, at www. God save it. I mean, I'm sorry. Not <laughs> kingdomradio.com, uh, www.kingdomradio.com. If you want to go back and um, listen to these at kingdompodcast.com, uh, you can go back. Uh, we're on, uh, we're also on, uh, we're also on uh, uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, you can go to iHeartRadio, type in the Kingdom Radio, and you can go on there and listen to us 24 hours a day, preaching, singing, everything. So, all right, guys. Um, uh, I like this teaching tonight. I like this. I like this. But anyways, guys, God bless all of you. Have a wonderful night. God bless everyone.